booktube i am here to talk about i am woman a native perspective on sociology and feminism by lee miracle so i have been trying to read more diversely and read by people with lots of different perspectives and um, from different human rights perspectives so i um lee miracle is one of the most prominent authors one of the most prominent native authors and yes, so I actually got this from my library. However, something that's kind of sad is that I had to request this from out of state. This actually came from the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, so, and I am not from Nevada, but there are so few copies, which is a bit shocking because it's very iconic. Anyways, um, let's get started. So, I Am Woman basically it's only 140 pages, but it packs a very powerful punch. It's very difficult to categorize kind of what genre it is. It's not really sociology, and it's not necessarily like totally feminist either, despite the title. Um, the author Lee Miracle, she talks about how she talks about how the um, um, She's compiled all these different stories from Native women about their experiences and what she's going to do with them. And but she describes them, she says she's going to describe them all in the first person, even though they didn't necessarily happen to her. And it's because it doesn't matter who it happens to; it just matters that it happened. So she writes about them from the first perspective. Um, so it's part biography, part manifesto. It kind of has it's vaguely political as well too. Um, it is technically feminist and it has like lots of different perspectives. Also, it has um, bits of writing and poet short stories and poetry by both Lee Miracle and some other Native authors. So it definitely has a unique perspective um, and it's very hard to categorize in any particular genre. But yes. Um, so let me see. Um, so I'm going to read a passage from her prologue or preface um, that kind of describes sort of her experience. Among the elders I visited in the first 10 years of my life, there was a quiet and deep respect for thinking which extended to men, women, and children. I was shocked as a 20 year old by concepts of, concepts of sexism coming from the mouths of young native men. No one would have dared doubt the intelligence of women 10 years earlier. At this time, the alternative to sexism um, was a feminist movement which objected to the role played by women in the home and the inequities between men and women in child rearing, rearing and work. Sexism and racism and the total dismissal of Native women's experiences has little to do with who does the dishes and who minds the babies. These oppressions result from the accumulation of hurt sustained by our people over a long period of time. Our communities are reduced to a substandard definition of normal, which leads to a sensibility of defeat, which in turn calls the victim to the table of lateral violence and ultimately changes the beliefs and corrodes the system from within. On this table of lateral violence sit the violence of men and women against children and the violence of men towards women. The healing movement of the 1980s and the 90s, spearheaded by women, is the struggle to clear the table of violence. So, um... So she definitely talks a lot about how um, racism spurred colonialism and therefore the genocide of Native people by European um, colonists. And that in turn has led to, um, and that in turn has led to a lot of violent forms of sexism. And, um, and you know, like one of the stories is a, um, is a Native woman being raped by her father and it's very, um, yeah, it's very traumatic and it's very difficult to read. And so she's talking about the violence in the communities and where it stems from and how it comes from being oppressed by a greater part of a culture. And um, so it's very fascinating in that sense. And it's very, it's a very important read because um, in this day and age in Canada and in America, Lee Miracle is Canadian, but she talks about both countries. Um, we do forget about Native people, and we do forget about their struggles, and we do forget about the issues that face them, and they almost seem as an afterthought. And she mentions this too, being an afterthought in the feminist movement. But we need to see, um, um, and uh, it just, it is difficult to read, even though it's 140 pages, because, um, 
I hate to use the word rant, but it is almost a rant, although it's completely justified, of um, instance after instance of oppression and of violence and, um, and of struggling to connect with the culture. So she talks a lot about um, integration um, because you know, all around Canada and America, and she calls it Can America, um, Native children have to go to school with white children. And obviously there are instances of racism there and Native children not being included or, you know, um, not being allowed to play because they're Native and people call them Indians. But what she particularly talks about is the struggles because teachers will say, um, like white teachers will say things like, um, and white people in general, why can't we just unite and why can't we all just be integrated and why can't we just um, be one people from now on? And it sounds, maybe if you're white like myself, um, it sounds nice, but at the same time that infuriates her because she rightfully points out when you mean that, you don't mean you want our cultures to actually unite. What you want is for us to conform to white culture and to white ideals. and. Um, you want us to give up our history and our stories and our culture and you want us to act like white people and um and it's very disheartening and so it's de um and uh that's something that she rightfully points out because um and that she kind of rails against because who's really giving up what here and it's a very important point to make um she talks a lot too um let me see i um I'm trying to find the passage. <clears throat> I should have marked this better. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, she talks about wanting to build a new society and a new, um, and a new land that and invigorating her culture with her people um, that celebrates it and she talks about too um, connecting to other oppressed races and here she talks about black people the land and its treasure are ours but the labor is black the land does not belong to black people but the fruit of their labor does they alone have earned their place in the sun dome of our future black people paid for this country with blood sweat and tears to black mother do i offer a piece of can america unconditionally for she had to sacrifice so many of her finest daughters with her alone do i strike a partnership an equal right to rebuild a nation more lovely than the settlers can imagine all others will have to fall in line or be left in, or be left behind outside the warm circles of our fires so um and then she talks about too i am not insensitive to the plight of the early white immigrants i know that your own people threw you into filthy disease written ex-slave ships and sent you here penniless womanless too i know you were dumped here because your own countrymen did not want wretched paupers messing up their system but quite frankly the persecution you, persecution you suffered you perpetrated on me that changes the terms of our alliance my friendship with you is not unconditional um and obviously there's so much pain and there's so much suffering and um, like and rightfully so because to have your entire to watch your culture dying before you and to know and to feel like hopeless and abandoned and abandoned is um, those themes are very poignant in this and I really recommend this for um, for everyone particularly if you live in North America um, obviously this is written for native women but she says that she knows that people of European descent will read it and I am one of those of European descent even though I am American and it is very important I think because we think of native problems as an afterthought and it's important to recognize um, that um, like the problems in those communities and to recognize too like who this land really belongs to um the one crit um overall i gave this four out of five stars the only critique that i really had of it and again like my critique basically holds no value because like i i'm not the target demographic and i really don't feel qualified to critique it but the only problem problem i hate to use that word but the only thing where she the only part where she lost me is this is in the middle of the book where she talks about um, how sort of the integration of native history with white history and education. And I'm going to read a passage. Um, I am bone weary of the new native educators, and for that matter, the native lawyers, who proud about including our view of history in the textbooks. I can just see such a way a text would read. 
madman slash spiritual leader Louis Riel massacred slash defeated white settlers slash the enemy at Duck Lake today. Or better yet, they are going to say that our ancestors made a great contribution to the development of Canada. This implies that our grandmothers helped build colonialism as much as white folk did. Not gra my grandmother. She taught me to be loyal to myself and our folk. At least, she tried to. A new history will only be written by those who would change the course of history. There is no other way, short of reinstituting segregation in schools. To have one point of view for settler and native, you must have unity between them. Education is all about maintaining culture. So, this is kind of where she lost me, and again, I'm not an educator, and I'm not a member of the native community, but, um, and she talks about how needing the education to be united with your culture, but I just, you know, I thought of, like, all, like, think of all the promises that Canada and America, the government and the people have made to native people, and how they've almost every single time been broken, even in the modern world, and I just, I just can't, I just feel like segregating schools is a really slippery path, and, um, and that said, too, like, separate and equal is never actually equal, particularly when one community is impoverished and forgotten and the other is wealthy and, um, and completely in charge of the status quo. Um, that being said, um, I can't claim to speak for either the education community or the native community, but that was just my two cents. Anyways, so um, that is I Am Woman by Lee Miracle. I highly recommend that you read this, particularly if you, if you live in Canada or North America. It is definitely a must read for anyone interested in culture or politics or sociology or feminism or racism or anyone who wants to continue living in North America. So um, yes, that being said, this is my review and I'm all done then. So doi! I shall see you next time.